and welcome to my back porch in my garden. I come out here in the mornings to have breakfast when the weather is nice. And I wanted to create a still life, bringing to mind all those uh, great still lives that uh, Charles Reed used to do of his breakfast table. Well, this isn't my breakfast table, but it's got a lot of breakfast elements. And what we can see, this is about 8.30 in the morning. We've got some good form shadow on the, on the teapot. We've got cast shadows coming off the fruit. We've got a good triangular design from the hydrangeas over to the teacup or to the top of the pillow. And then coming down to the fruit, we've got, uh, we can lose some edges. We're gonna see this uh, as shapes and not objects. And uh, I've also created a very analogous color scheme. It's all going on the left side of the, uh, of the uh, color wheel. So it's very restful and calm. And that's what I'm trying to say in my garden as well. All right, I wanna first talk about drawing and composition. And uh, what I've done here, first of all, as I, I mentioned, I pick a lot of colors that I find restless. So I've created an analogous color scheme, a lot of colors of, pink, of uh, blues and greens, and uh, even the yellows are mostly cool yellows and uh, greens going over on the cool side, a lot of turquoise. Uh, which we were to find and that's why one of the reasons why this composition looks and setup looks so pleasing because the colors are pretty analogous. Secondly, um, I wanted to find my centers of interest and usually you look for your centers of interest to be at the, the, uh, the corners of your center of the composition. So to do that, you do a diagonal line corner to corner and then halfway corner to, to halfway. So my potential centers of interest are the teapot, the flowers up here, up here, which is not gonna be anything, or over here in the fruit. And uh, you definitely don't want your center in the, the middle. I really worked hard to not have my vase of flowers smack dab in the middle. It's over here on the left. And I'm probably gonna have my center of interest up here. Uh, as I said, also, I'm, I'm, uh, I lost the morning light, uh, and so, uh, but I've got a photo to really uh, find where the bright lights are, and I'm going to look at this as shapes and not, um, not items, and not, uh, not individual items. So I did re a relational drawing um, to do this. I did this uh, drawing from life, and my. Uh, uh, source of what I considered my my key thing I was working off of was the vase, this vase here, this vase right here, and the, the size of the vase. And then I was basically relating everything and doing my drawing to how big is this unit of measure and then doing my relationships based upon that unit of measure. So, uh, drawing there to here, and then how many units of measure down is the teapot, how many units of measure is the ball jar over here, and uh, how many units of measure are do I need to get to get to the edge of the, uh, of the uh, bowl. And uh, that's a very useful way of uh, figuring out how to do your drawing. Okay, I'm gonna start with uh, up here in the hydrangeas and I'm using a uh, uh, sable rosemary brush, a very big brush, as you see, very big brush. And I'm going to work um, very loose right now. I'm gonna work uh, dry, so it will get wet, but it'll, I'm gonna start dry. And I'm gonna work with my schminky plate paints uh, I usually don't use these for um, uh, people, when I'm painting people, but I use them a lot when I want to get some really intense colors. I'm gonna try and mix a lot of my greens. I just used a pure yellow and with a little bit of cerulean in it. 
and you can see I get a really bright green. The Schmincke Cerulean is a very bright uh, cerulean and it's one of the few that's not that opaque. So you can see I've got a really nice vibrant green happening here. And I'm gonna work on losing some of these edges. Not have a lot of hard edges over in this very bright part of the image. There is some bright yellows and I'm going to go to, this is called winter blue. And I think it is the perfect color for this hydrangea over here. And we're in the shadow area and some of it overshadowing into that hydrangea and getting some of our greens down here and down in here and then some of this winter blue and over into this hydrangea where it's we've got some really cool areas in the shadow and at this point I'm just doing shapes as I see them on my image and I'm going to try and lose some of these edges. I really don't want to have some hard edges. But I do like the fact that there is some white right there so I want to save that white uh, to some extent. And coming around here we can see this hydrangea and get that yellow coming over here. These are very bright schminky yellows. here and a little of the blue coming down over here it's a little darker over here Let's mix up some of that green again. Get it really bright for this leaf coming out here and some of these leaves down here. Let's just get switching over maybe to some Marillion. And I'm just getting that green happening. Now I don't usually mix a lot of my greens, but I do like some of the schminky greens. I like their olive greens. That's what this is right here. And I'll move that in. Some Prussian. And this is, might be Windsor Newton, with some hands of light to get a dark green happening through here. And as I said, I'm working I want this to be pretty loose. I want these these colors to blade right now. Okay, I can get some of that mountain blue coming in so it doesn't so it's bleeding in. green coming in and I want a mixed green also right through here as a leaf coming oh, we'll use some some 
phthalo turquoise with a new gamboge. That'll make a nice olivey green. Let's see, that's a nice green as well. lose some of these edges at this point. Okay. Turquoise. See how bright and beautiful that turquoise is? That's the uh, Schminky Cerulean. Isn't that beautiful? And we'll bring it up to the, as the sides of the vase and then just get some of that yellow and green mixed going down in here and we'll restate it later but we just want to get a little of that in there and maybe get some yellows popping in and popping over here and popping over here let them pop over a little bit see some of the sunlight coming in. Okay. And I've got a leaf right here, so let's get that leaf in too. And this is, I want to lose that edge because it's a fairly, let's just lose that edge with a little turquoise. Don't want that to be a screaming difference in value. So, and then I want to go back and get this leaf in here. And negative paint around my teapot. And at this point, keep this fairly light. I'm going to go darker in a minute. But I just want to get that in there. And then let's find my in there. A little darker. Yeah. Very dark. And I'll put that up here too. Well, we're still... Well, it's still pretty wet and we could bleed around. And we'll put a little of that here and a little of that right here. for that leaf and bring that also over here and bring that down here. There. Now, take a little and really pop that edge of the face. Okay. Now, I want to, sometimes I want drips to happen, and sometimes I don't. And at this point, I don't. And you can see there's both form shadow and cast shadow on the teapot. This is a form shadow, and I want to have a soft edge on my form shadow right there. And I'm still using this very big brush, which is fine. Got a form shadow happening here, so I want a soft edge happening here. Form shadow, and I've got I want my I've got this bounce light coming off of the face. So let's bounce that light right there off the vase, connecting in to my shadow area. Go back to my cobalt blue violet, bring that in. And it's actually a cast shadow coming off of that plum. So we'll make that darker in a minute. Um, 
And because we've got some, we're just gonna let those drips go down. Now, I'm gonna get, just to make sure I get some of the colors I want in this teapot and pull some of that cobalt blue violet up in here and into the handle. Coming up in that form shadow. And a little bit of this green we still have. And use it to state the edge of the teapot. There. Now, I've got that, I'm gonna lose that over in there. And let's still state the edge of the teapot handle. That's just muck that was hanging around in my, um, on my palette and I can bring that same color into here as well. Now, I've got, oh, let's take a little Prussian and pop it right here. There. And down in here. And then I've got, uh, now what I did is I'm moving a plum over here, right here. So I'm gonna have a cast shadow coming off that, but I need to figure out where the plum is first. Um, and I just kind of drew it in, but I wanna put a little bit of cerulean, very much, cause there's a reflected light coming off the face right there. All right. Um, okay, now, interestingly, we've got a very bright yellow cast shadow or reflected light coming off of that lemon. So I'm gonna pull in, this is a little scary, but I'm gonna pull in some lemon into that form shadow. So we see it. there's the form shadow and there's the lemon, a little bit of the lemon. Now let's put that lemon in. I'm using again Schminky Pure Lemon. I moved my lime over here from my image, so I'm gonna respect that. Um, a little bit lighter up here, so let's stop that. And interestingly, there is a form shadow on the lemon as well. So I'm gonna go with some raw sienna in the middle for that form shadow right here. Just a little bit of shadow coming off of there. Might need to make it a little brighter with a little orange there. And then I have a popped shadow, reflected light right onto the teapot. And I'm going to pull in some raw sienna and pop it over there. Now I've got my, my plum. I'm gonna start with some pyroline maroon in the bright area here on the bright side of that plum and then go over to mineral violet for the form shadow and then some cobalt blue violet on the very bottom down there and it's actually got a little bit of reflected light right on that edge. So I'm gonna go like there. 
Now, I want to really pop that shadow that's coming off of it. So it's going to be, hmm, I think I need that to be in a, nope, yeah. I'll pop it over in a little ultramarine. Maybe that, to pop it even more. And then I'm going to go to my sminky, one of my favorite colors, sminky bright blue violet. Beautiful color. And it's going to pop right over here into that form shadow. And okay, now let's go over to the fruit. And I've started with this lemon uh, using the pure lemon or the pure yellow and the uh, lime where it's got a lot of yellow in that lime. So I've put a lot of lime lemon in it. And now I'm going to go over to our plums and I'm going to start. These plums are a little bit redder. So I'm going to use some alizarin in this plum right here and try and I've got a little reflected light right there. It's got a little highlight. So we'll keep this. I didn't mask anything on here. And then I'm gonna move over to some mineral violet. And just, again, let things bleed, look for similar uh, values. I've got a plum next to it that's even darker. So I'm just gonna, as I see that, I don't even see a difference between those two plums. I do see an area that's a little lighter up here. So I'm gonna come over with my uh, Pyrely Maroon. And again, I've got a highlight there where the sun is hitting that. And it's actually kind of yellow even. So let's throw a bump of yellow in there. It's gonna turn it brown, but that doesn't matter because it looks kind of brown anyway. And then I'm gonna come back around with a really dark, uh, let's go back to our sneaky, uh brilliant blue violet. And over on this plum, and we've got that dark right there too, and coming in here. So we don't even see any difference in that. Now let's get that other plum in again. Uh, it's kind of orangey over there in the corner. So let's just use some transparent orange right here. And then we'll use some Hyrule Maroon around it. And then pull in my cobalt blue violet right there. And we've got a yellow piece right in there. There must be a lemon sitting down here, so we'll stick that in and it'll just bleed over. Now we've got a really dark item right here. So I'm going to go back with my cobalt blue violet and some mineral violet. And again, keeping my highlight right there. I'm going to start with a little Davies Gray in the bolter right there. Little Davies Gray, 
have it up in the lid of the ball jar and coming over on this side. And then again, I've got a form shadow in the middle. And this image was shot early in the morning. So I have morning light coming from this direction and then things bouncing around. So there's my, my ball jar. Now I'm gonna use some manganese for a, the color of this ball jar. And parts of it, and remember I didn't mask anything, so I'm just gonna have some lines where I have reflected light coming down here. I'm using again that manganese here and here and negative painting around my lip of my um, and then I've got a lot of dark manganese right down there so let's Lose a little bit of this edge and then again I moved, in this case, I moved my uh, lime over here. So, but I still have the bottom of the ball jar is basically about there. So I'm going to get some impression for that bottom of the ball jar down here and some reflected color back in there, and some darks right in there, and dark edges right around here. Now, I have this teacup over here, it's a very bright blue. So I'm going back to that mountain blue. I want to bring that color over here and it's here. I'm going to move this a little over here. So again, I don't get it me in front of the camera. I'll maybe get some cobalt in here too. Cause it's a really bright, yeah, it's a nice bright blue. through here, and it goes up in here, and let's put a little cerulean up there. And it's a very mid-century modern teapot, teacup. It actually is the same set as the vase. And they both have these little, um, hobnail lights in them, but I'm not going to put those in. There we go. Now I've got that reflected light coming off of it, so I'm going to put that in the manganese. And on this side, I'm going to have it really bright. And it's much more olive, so I'm going to go back to that sh nice schminky olive green. And it's actually got some reflective color on this side from the lemon popping over. So I'm going to keep that reflective color coming in. And I've got form shadow. So form shadow, I'm going to put that in impression. Maybe a little dark, but it's okay, pull it over. And interestingly, the color of that shadow is reflecting kind of the color of the lime and the plum. So I'm going to, the lemon and the plum, so I'm gonna use these colors for my shadow. Coming over here, very interesting. Now I do also have a shadow shape 
Oh, okay. Now, let's go back here and I want to use some Prussian in some of the background of the ball jar just to give it some depth and to pop my lip of my teapot out a little bit more there and to get the rim of the jar going. So here is the completed painting on 140 Fabriano cold. It's, um, I've ended up losing the background a little bit more, putting a lot of yellow over there. It was too blue. I needed to, uh, and I ended up losing the pillars because they were just getting in the way and uh, um, distracting from the triangle. And here you really see the triangle of that composition. So today I painted the same image, but I painted it on Stonehenge 140 hot press. And you can see how completely different the painting looks when you paint on something like Stonehenge hot press. It's a lot more fluid, the, a lot drippier, the paint colors move around a lot differently. And uh, whereas the Fabriano is very soft and the paint sinks into the surface on this, the paint is sitting very high up on the surface and moving around fluidly. So determine what you're going to paint and what you're trying to get across, the mood you're trying to get across, and the um, sense of what you're trying to get across, and that'll determine what kind of paper you want to use. Here we've gone from two completely different um, sides of the spectrum from the Fabriano soft, very soft 140, cold, to the Stonehenge 140 hot, very hard and, and fluid. I hope you enjoyed this and uh, thank you for coming to our garden, garden party. Thank you.